Okay, the hub and the drum assembly is on the crane. Yeah, we've done the drilling, we've had the broach through there. So we're going to uh, get him over here onto the pillar drill and see if we can cut that counter sunk head off the top of the bolts and then uh, get him an head press, see if we can just pop that hub out without doing any damage. I really don't want to damage that drum because it's um, well, going to be difficult to get hold of and there's not a lot up with it in fairness so why do we put cost in job? Right, we'll see if we can just wind him up. I like winding things up. Of course, back in the day, I'd have done this without the crane. I'd have held him with my left hand, wouldn't I? So what we were trying to achieve there is, is, is what we have actually achieved, which is to cut that head off that bolt. Yeah, so we've got a countersink in the brake drum. We've run a 12mm broach through there. So if I shine the light, you can see straight through him. This is a 14mm. She's just cut that head off, lovely. So hopefully by the time we've done the other four, we should be able to just pop them in the press and press them out without a great lot of force. Pretty much ready to go again with this last one. Now it's all over for this fella. Yeah, he's gone there. Um, uh, more or less gone there. He's gone, I can see him wobbling, but he's not having it. Not even a lot left of him, never mind sticking in there. Still, it's an excuse to break your chisels out, isn't it? I mean, he's folded there, you see. It's a shame we've had to break him out like that. Everything's better for a brush, isn't it? A couple more bolts broke there. There we go. Got him out. It's like kiss on drum there where he's uh, tasted the chisel. But anyway. Right, all we've got to do now is get some of these bad boys under that 12 ton jack on that press and uh, see if they'll pop. Right, we've got the... Uh, Hub and drum assembly in the uh, Chinese uh, press. Uh, it's not been bad, really. This, uh, you know, I've used it for all sorts of bits of things. Um, but this will be, without doubt, its biggest test. So let's see if we can push a stud. Let's go for it. These studs aren't knocking tight, They're, they've got a, a nut on the back, they're squeezed onto the hub. So by pushing on the stud, it should push on the hub and uh, yeah, it's, it's great to be tea and metals. Mm. 
don't know whether just to give that some percussion or what, said the vicar. Anybody seen any movement? Is that a bit there? Right, we're going to go for it here a bit. I've got the long range um, jack avoidance lever in place, and we're just gently going to wind some power onto this and yeah, see what breaks really or, or, or spits out. So we'll give it another pump nice and gently here. Yeah? We're definitely, definitely giving it the beans. There's no two ways about that. It's made a great lot of difference, has it? Summer, even if it's the stud into the oar. Probably just push the drum into the board, board actually. Whoa! By golly, I think we've got it. Probably just push the drum into the board, board actually. Whoa! By golly, I think we've got it. Show you that that's pop lovely that has. Yes, we've got that lovely popping round there. So comes right round here. I'm gonna uh, spin him round now in the press and uh, just push that other side out. the long one again and hide behind the uh, hide behind the jack he's gonna pop trouble is you can't see him pushing in because the paint forms a crust and you can't see any movement so he might be moving we can't see out at a minute. 
Move that time. Move that time. Oh yeah, we got it. We've got it. We've got it. Nice and gently. Nice and gently. A bit like Del Boy and his crystal chandelier. Here we go. That's grand. I've just dislodged him, so I shouldn't put my fingers in there, should I? I've just dislodged him so that the drum is resting on the top of the stud, which gives me some finger room on Drake, because I'm going to have to lift it off. Not too bad. So we've got the drum over there to get the uh, Stanley three pound tuning stick here. Yeah? You'd have to say she's complete with no cracks. Rings like a bell. Not a lot of wear in that drum, you know. Right. Here's the uh, hub. Now looking at it, I'm already regretting not carrying on all the way through with the other ones. I think these ones where I've drilled right through with the brooch are just going to be so much easier to... Um, manage than these and um, strange design I always think these hubs um, they've got this void here between the studs and and you know the the studs sort of sit in between and you've got the retaining nut on the back and uh, you know just not just not as nice as the old knock, well, I guess say the old, you know, the knocking style. Um, ERF's adopted the knocking style a lot earlier than Foden, and uh, all the better for it. I think there's only Foden and a few old trailer manufacturers use this style in the end. Um, but, you know, the, the grease in this, these both of these front hubs has been absolutely brilliant. You know, fair play to, to Philip, the previous owner, or whomever did his servicing, because... Uh, you know everything's bang up to date and you know the bearing tracks initial look on them is pretty good so uh, well worth the effort of pulling that to bits you know future servicing is going to be so much easier now we've got the hub and the, the drum separate because right, I've given this fella some minimal and I really do mean minimal tapping and uh, we start to get results already I have a feeling we've got his, his first winner here, if this goes to plan. Right, so we're in the press again. Uh, got that socket inside. Uh, got three quarter half inch adapter just to get a shorter extension in. I've got an half. Okay, so this should be pretty mundane, really, but um, it's better to do it this way than to um, mess about with a chisel or a, a bar adrift. You know, you're risking chipping something and all the rest of it that's come out beautiful look at that we're just going to wash that up um, yeah, that really is in outstanding condition good old philip you know i mean so we managed to um repatriate the track and the race gotta say that um 
the race doesn't look to be in, in just as good or order there. It, it's got some, uh, yeah, it's got some signs of water ingression. We know the hubcap wasn't too good, and this is the outer bearing. Might be useful to start giving Rick a call at um, Bearing Warehouse in Sheffield to see what he can get me on that, because Rick's the man and he'll get me them. So the S80 does not have knocking wheel studs. It has these studs with a thread on for your wheel and a thread on to retain. The annoying thing with these studs is you can't undo the nut and just knock them through if you've got the drum off. They've got to have the drum off as well. So we're going to use a 33mm impact on the half inch drive D-Wall. Inch and 5 sixteenths, 3 quarter weight, 33mm, take your pick. Tight enough. Well, that made all the difference. Bit of a battery in there. Eh? Now, back when we were working for Alf, and we had a wheel stud go like this, there'd be a big mad rush because it'd be loaded with retarder Mac for King's Cross the following morning, and everything had to be out and gone. We've got time, so we're not going to be smacking it with the hammer. We're going to. Give it a quick push out with the press and save herself all the heartache of having to try and um, get the uh, nut on after the event. That was much easier. Here we go, last one, number 10. Right, these four bolts retain the um, the chrome disc or the aluminium disc that goes over the front hub, the hub cap, I suppose you'd call it. Um, I'm pretty sure that these three are okay. So my problem here is he's broke below the surface, not above, uh, and I'm not going to be able to weld anything on that. Okay, so we've got the snap, snap stud. We've now drilled it. So I've knocked in an old Torx bit. Um, it's a really strange one. It must have some damage right at the bottom. I think we're top side now. Yeah, I think you can. I think you can see now we've we've really got some thread coming up through there. It's actually starting to get easier. So as you can see there, we've we've not gone right the way through with the we've not gone right the way through with the uh, drill. And this is a um, CRV6 apparently, but it's um, one we got in stock, it's no one, isn't it? I'm just going to run the uh, tap through that and we'll call that a good job done. Lovely. Even mate, we, you see there, we just pop, popped the drill hole in him, managed to get him off the, off the bit. Grand. Right, we're well, reaching the end of this marathon which has been stripping this uh, front hub. I've got one last job to do which is to take out that bearing track. And you can... That bearing to me looks like it's never been out before. So we're potentially looking at the first bearing removal here, which is possible. And I think we're just bending the bar in. Yeah, we are. <sighs> No simple as it. Right, we're getting flattered out and uh, we're going to beef him up. Right, we're on round two of Let's Play Push the Bearing Out. Now, we've all got heroes for various reasons and, and too many of them are um, football players and Greta Thunberg. What, what we really need to celebrate are people who've really changed people's lives. And, and my two heroes Oh, the guy who invented the um, one mil cooking disc, and and the other the other guy 
is, is the guy who invented the flat wheel uh, because you can make anything with them especially if you're going to celebrate another guy who made the MIG welder so we're going to have a go here anyway see if we can do them justice with uh, pushing this bearing out all the time that is pushing so sweetly this. so we've got that first part out which is the gas for the spacer ring for the hub seal beautiful here's the bearing track looking in pretty good order to be fair I think we're going to be replacing it but I think that's uh, I think that's almost certainly an original bearing to get it out we chopped up a bit of that 10 mil plate that we used earlier and then we welded that bit that we bent earlier on the top then we cut it with a 1 mil angle grinder and we've got a right nice bearing pushing tool there haven't we now you know so we'll put that with press somewhere in its box of tools and use it again so this is a, another lump of shopping trolley that we built the airframe out of to be honest with you I'm going to start drilling the studs out of the uh, hub, the front hub there that's in the, in the work mate We've drilled them through and uh, the problem I've got is I need to run this 14mm through the hole So we're going to use this, or uh, well, these pieces in particular, as part of the holding device to hold the, um, the hub in place So. We'll use that par portion as a uh, spacer and then uh, drill a couple of holes in it and um, yeah, Bob's your uncle. So we go. We'll set up now for taking out the um, the drum screws. We've done a few already. Um, a bit of problem with light and one thing. Like so, um, got this table set up to zero. <clears throat> we know we've got some run out in the... Uh, drill stock this isn't a precision machine at the end of the day that's about 1.9 on that one 1.6 whatever it is and then we've got about um yeah you see 91.7 on that so she's roughly 90 degrees we're going to get one degree of run out maximum in this as you can see i've already just taken a quick cut round so you can see the outer housing this is the remnants of the bolt and you can see we're pretty, pretty much centred up now with the drill to go straight through the middle. Right, I'm giving it a quick cut just to sense check that. Um, the blocks, I've just made some blocks out of that old trolley just to lift it up, just to get the wheel spaces out. And I've got this block of wood under it just to hold it all steady. They're, they adjust nicely because we've got a bolt at one end and a bolt at this other end. So she's all, all nice and firm. So we'll... We'll bang the drill through um, and then once we bang the drill through we can actually collapse what's left of the thread so 14 mil drill 14 mil is roughly the drill size to tap a 5 HU and F thread it's something like 14.6 or something but anyway we can sort that but uh, let's have a go and see how we go on I was fortunate enough to bump into David Keyworth today and anybody who lives a 50 mile radius of here knows that David's a bit of a Cummins legend, a bit of a truck legend and if he tells you something you pay attention. David had said he'd seen a couple of the videos and said that where I've been quoting 5 8 UNF for these drum screws he actually says that a 3 8 BSP. 3 8 BSP, 3 8 gas is not a thread I considered for these. So I've got a drum screw and um, I'll just bring that in a bit closer. This is this is one that uh, I welded the end on. We rotor broached it out and I welded the end on that particular um, thread and it came out. This is obviously the rear axle and we're going to try it in. We're American, we'd be doing a live stream right about now, wouldn't we? So we're going to give it the best possible chance with some diesel in the thread. And she's straight in, finger tight, no problem at all. This is one of my new drum screws that I got off my man in Lincolnshire. 
and again that goes in beautifully no effort whatsoever so now all I've got to do is determine whether that is 5 8 UNF or 3 8 gas now yesterday I went to see my mate who lives in on monkey brew who's a millionaire and uh, he let me go through his scrap bin and pick out all these old taps and dies from there I was able to get this 3 8 BSP thing of beauty tap. It's the first tap, so it's got a nice taper on it. We're going to try it in the hole, see what we make of it. You know, I think that's pretty conclusive, isn't it? It's gone straight in. So there you have it. David was right after all. Every day is a school day. Thanks for that, David. Take care, mate. This year on it is the case for the defence. We would of course like the defendant's previous good character to be taken into account. Right, we've got a couple of minor interruptions uh, this afternoon. Um, so we've done the drilling. Um, so we've got that out to about 14... Uh, 0.4 when I measured it earlier so what I'm doing now it might look like I'm cutting a new thread and I suppose in some ways I am but what I'm actually doing is uh, forcing out the remnants of the old bolt okay so just pull this out for a quick look yeah they're they're pretty good aren't they it's cut them pretty well so we'll keep on we'll keep on running them through because we are just about there with that one Didn't like that, did it? So we're just struggling to get the tap all the way through from the other side and as an indication of how we've drilled it and what have you if we have a look here we can see we've actually got a bit of the old bolt hanging out and that's stopping the tap going all the way through so I'm just going to get a little chisel or something and just give him a tap and get rid So I'm not sure you can see that. But that's that's obviously the remnants of the old bolt. And then we've just we've just pulled him out there. So the tap should go all the way through now. And that's lovely look, it's coming through absolutely perfect now we've got that bit of bolt out of the way. Right, okay, we've just had tea. Lovely. And I'm just getting set up to strip this second uh, hub and drum assembly down so don't worry I'm not going to make you sit through that but but it would appear that uh, I stand corrected and I actually got it wrong on the other hub you may remember that I said all of these uh, types of hub are bolting studs so it's a thread on this side it has a nut on the inside and it's bolted in well with this one that is not the case we've got a knocking stud fit let's have a closer look so we can see these ones have got the nuts on them but this one appears to be retained by that dirty grey blob of crochet so somebody's wedged in a, a knocking and uh, just giving it a blob of weld um, I knew that we got a spurious stud because if you look at it this is the fella here it's longer than the other ones this is the knock-in stud. Um, this drum's really in poor order compared to the other one based on the surface rust. I'm going to give that a couple of smacks just to see if we get any movement. Yeah, that didn't take a lot of knocking out, did it? So, um, as you can see there, 
not the best of welds I think we've we've certainly got nothing gripping it there that's that's not broke anything out so we've got that little section there that uh, that was retaining it there might be a little bit of weld still stuck to the hub we'll see that later but yeah not very good really that was it certainly wouldn't have been talked up to 450 newton meters anywhere near I'll put that in stock but I don't use it These are the five um, heads off the countersunk 580 and F bolt, so they've come out lovely. Um, here's the drum, so you know we've got the holes here, everything's okay. We look here, there's something dodgy going off here. We come round here and we see the full extent of what something dodgy was. It looks like um, it looks like we've um, suffered some sort of breakage and then it's been welded back in I think this one's going to be similar we seem to have some cracking here I think we can, yeah you can see some movement there let's get out of there yeah it didn't take a lot of doing did it brake drums oh dear look at that that would have been a nightmare wouldn't it that so break drum shopping next. Well, I've just been looking through our stock of uh, old parts and unbelievably we might have had a spot of luck here. I bought this hub and drum at John Keeley's sale a few years back. Looks like it's the same size drum as the front one we just broke. Um, so we're going to dig him out, get him home and see if we can give him the treatment that him uh, squeezed off that hub and we've got a pair of front drums if that's the case. Lovely, let's get that out. So I'm not going to smack the living daylights out of it like we would do if this was a, a working lorry as it were because obviously we're dealing with something here that's a bit more fragile. So we're just going to do some dead weight blows and see if we get some movement. Don't think there's any surprises there is there? Right, we've had a bit of tea. I'm going to put the safety specs on because these studs do chip and given the current diesel shortage nobody wants to go to A&E in the car, do they? Yeah, we've got some movement now. I know I've said this before, but I've got it worried now. I'm going to move this round to get to that fella there. Okay, I think we've got that. We'll just uh, tap these up now. Job done. Rings true. That's good news, really good news. We don't need anything off the hub, but then I'm going to take these nuts off, drop the studs out, just make it a bit easier to store and what have you get everything cleaned up. We'll call that a good evening's work I think. Right well it's a um, another cold wet September early evening as you can see. I've got the four drum cells that are going on to the S80. These three are the originals and this is the one that um, we split off that hub there last night. 
we'll call that the Keeley drum. We're not going to fit uh, the drums in this condition to the lorry. I think it's always um, it's always a, a poor job when you've you've got overspray on your drums or they're just rusty and crappy. These have come from Fairground World, so loads of paint on them because the truck will have been painted loads of times. So we're going to give them the wheel of death, <clears throat> a really light skim over, and then we're going to finish them in a nice matte black, and that will preserve them till we do the build. They are going to get knocked about and all the rest of it, but if, uh, if we do the odd scratch on a brake drum, we'll just cover it up again with a bit of black paint on a brush. So the main job is, let's get them cleaned up, coat of etch primer, a couple of coats of colour, stick them in the other shed out of the way uh, and they're ready to fit when we need them. Let's get on with it. Right, the drums have cleaned up really well. We've got all the thick heavy paint off, we've been over them with the uh, the brake cleaner or the degreaser, call it what you will. Some interesting uh, casting marks on them that I uh, must admit had me concerned to begin with. Let's see if we can show you them. Um, but these were the marks that had me concerned earlier. Um, and then on this drum, it's got the same marks. So it must be something in the, the casting process back in the day but they're not they are not the prettiest casting that's for sure this this one has also got this marking on it here um none of the others have or I haven't been able to find anything on the others uh if you remember a bit earlier in the video I was on about we did the the drum that that's it there um, fortunately we've not cracked it or anything so i'm pleased with that and that's that's the final one, so that's all cleaned up. Like I say, they've had they've had some brake cleaner, so we just need to just need to get some paint on them now and get them back in storage and clear the way and do something else. Right, you join us in um, what can only be described as an October heatwave. We've finally got the drums and the hubs finished. Um, does seem an awful lot of work for the end result, which is four drums and two wads. This matte paint uh, is from Wigan Paints. Uh, it's just tidied those drums up. They were very second hand. It's just tidied them up to look something like. This hub is the near side hub with the left hand thread studs in it. We've also got one missing there. I'm going to uh, have to find something for that. This is where the uh, welded stud was, we flat padded it off and as you can see I've just stuffed a, a stud in it, um, so we just need one more. Uh, I've left them taped up because uh, they're going into storage at the end of the day and we just need them to stay dry and, and sorted out. We've got the hub, the rear hub here, that um, that'll just go back into storage, there's nothing up with it, we're just not going to use it on this build. Um, lots to do, lots to get on with. Um, so we'll get these back into storage now, uh, and they'll be lovely to install when we come to install because at the end of the day they're going to be clean, dry, and fresh.